If I keep doing this at the start of every video, it's gonna end up becoming my thing. <laughs> They're not a sponsor, by the way. I just like them. I need the energy to film. Okay, you guys understand what's going on. You saw the thumbnail, you saw the title, you clicked on the video. 18 games you probably didn't know about that are coming to Switch, getting physical releases and might actually be worth buying. And believe me, I get it. My wallet hurts too. We just had a bunch of great games release. Oh look, I accidentally bought two copies of Dragon's Dogma. Well, if this video gets over 10,000 likes, I guess I'll just have to give one away. Rest in peace our wallets already, and the last thing we need right now is for some Australian schmuck with long hair to come along and tell us all about 18 more games we might want to buy. Well, this is how I pay my bills, so I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> but I'm gonna shut up because 18 games is a lot to try and cram into one video. Let's just get started. Remember to hit that like button, check the links down below for the giveaway. Subscribe if you're new around here. I don't know why I said it like that. For the king! Is the name of the first game on the list. For the King is a turn-based RPG that throws in roguelike elements. This mix results in an almost tabletop gameplay experience. The King has been slain, and to set the world back to peace from chaos, you need to venture forth and kill the Kingslayer. Maps, events, and quests are all procedurally generated. For the King sports an intricate yet straightforward combat system. If that was too gross, I'm gonna do another take. For the King sports an intricate yet straightforward combat system. The tabletop world, animation, and aesthetic design all cohesively work together. For the King might have a world worth exploring when it releases on May 24th. Enter the Gungeon. A lot of you might be thinking, I thought that game was already on Switch. Well, you're not wrong, but it was digitally on Switch. Remember, this list is all physical games, meaning Enter the Gungeon is finally getting a physical release on Switch. And I, for one, am very excited. This was one of my favorite indie games that I played last year. Enter the Gungeon is a fantastic twin stick roguelike shooter that will pull you in again and again for just one more run. Oh, I'm sorry. It appears this video is now uh, blocked in your country. That sucks. Well, I'll just bring up ExpressVPN for you and change you to, let's say, Canada. Assuming you're not already in Canada and then this whole bit doesn't even work. And uh, oh, look, here I am. I'm back. Yay, ExpressVPN is awesome. Also the sponsor of this video, so let's talk about him. <laughs> So you can watch a video in the country that it's blocked in by pretending to be somewhere else. Or you can binge watch every episode of Suits by signing into Canadian Netflix. It's as easy as just changing your location and tricking your computer into thinking you're somewhere else. But on top of being a master hacker, another reason why ExpressVPN is so great is just for privacy, which is a necessity these days. It's less than $7 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if all this sounds good to you, and it really should, take back your internet privacy today and Find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box. ExpressVPN.com slash beat-em-ups would. Oh great, and now we're blocked in Canada too. How about Australia? Does that work for you? Alright, great. Thanks again ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Let's just move on and keep talking about these games. Okay, a lot of you have probably already heard about or you're excited for the Crash Team Racing remake, but I'm not sure how many people know that, yeah, it actually is confirmed to be coming to Switch. Crash Bandicoot is making his second big appearance on the Nintendo Switch with Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel. All of the original game models, characters, tracks, power-ups, and controls are intact in this party kart racer. And now that we have so much Crash on the Switch, is it about time we saw Crash in Smash Brothers? Is that something that we even want? Is that something we'd even play with? Can my voice go any annoyingly higher? Moving on. I'm never sure how to pronounce this next one, but my time at Porsche? Portia? Portia? It's already on Switch digitally, but it's getting a physical release. Taking a quote from the game itself, start a new life in the enchanting town of Portia. Portia. I don't carry you. Restore your pa's neglected workshop to its former glory by fulfilling commissions, growing crops, raising animals, and befriending the quirky inhabitants of this charming post-apocalyptic land. I think that's the first time I've heard the words charming and post-apocalyptic in the same sentence. It's received mostly positive reviews on Switch already. So when it finally releases physically on May 13th, it might just scratch that Animal Crossing itch that so many of you have. I don't, personally. I am gonna play Animal Crossing, but so Luigi's Mansion for me, that's the, I, please hurry up. 
Trine series one to three. Oh, and also Trine 4, The Nightmare Prince. This is technically two games in one, so I guess this list has 19. I'm gonna keep it 18 because I have OCD and even numbers are better. If you have held off of playing the Trine series, then I have some great news for you. First, Trine 1 to 3 are coming as a package. All three of these games in one package? That's like two really great games for the price of one. And you also get the third game. Trine is known for its fantastic mixture of puzzles, action adventure, and a beautiful 2.5D art. However, the Trine news doesn't end there, because the highly anticipated Trine 4, Nightmare Prince, is also coming to Switch this September. So that's the entire series on Switch coming throughout the year. That's pretty cool, I guess. Bet you probably didn't know about that. Got him. <laughs> Alright, you might know about the next one, but I don't talk about Shovel Knight as much as I should on this channel, so Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. It is finally getting a physical release on Switch. If you haven't played Shovel Knight yet, you are seriously in for a treat, and also probably in the minority, <laughs> but that, that's okay. Shovel Knight and its add-ons are heavily inspired by NES platformers like Super Mario, Mega Man, DuckTales, and it's a blast. From its charming retro-inspired graphics to its challenging yet addicting platforming. I don't think I have to convince anyone of this one, so let's just move along. I am very excited for Resident Evil Origins Collections. It's just one collection, I don't know why I said collections. A few of the incredible Resident Evil games are making their way to Nintendo Switch on May 21st. Sadly, these iconic horror titles are priced at full retail price, so $59.99, so we'll just breeze past that really quick. However, if you don't mind the cost, these are two classics that shouldn't go unplayed. Next, we have Guacamele, or Guacamele, depending on what country you're from. One, two, punch edition. I have so many regrets in my life and I just keep adding to them every time I turn the camera on. <laughs> Guacamele 1 and 2 are getting a physical release. If you didn't know, the Guacamele titles are a masterclass of game design. They offer rock solid platforming, funny dialogue, and addicting as ever Metroidvania mechanics. I also just reviewed Guacamele Guacamele 2 on my channel and I'll leave a link to that down below. But if you're looking for a challenging, rewarding, and comedic adventure game, look no further. I highly recommend both of these games, the first and the second, as must plays for anyone who likes platformers, co-op titles, and of course, Metroidvania games. Hey, uh, was I about the only person that actually liked <laughs> Assassin's Creed 3? I didn't love it, but as a fan of the series, I thought it was one of the stronger titles. If you missed out on playing the third game back when it was released, and then you missed it again when it was re-released on Wii U, which I don't blame you for missing that one, you have another chance, a third chance to play the third game right now on Switch. Well, not right now, you gotta wait, but it's coming. <laughs> That's the point. Assassin's Creed 3 did have a very mixed reception on its release. However, much to my surprise, the belated Nintendo Switch remaster offers some exclusive features that intrigue me. First, the game features a touchscreen interface when undocked. The Switch version also includes motion aiming, which I loved in Breath of the Wild, so hopefully it works here too. Then, the Switch version also provides a HUD adaption for different display models and HD rumble, which is a nice addition. Again, I really didn't hate it when I played it the first time. It's been a long time since I played it, but I'm excited to try out these new features and see how it holds up today. I don't have high hopes, but we'll see. <laughs> Wolfenstein Youngblood is one that I am very excited for. It still blows my mind that the renowned porting house Panic Button managed to get Wolfenstein 2 running on the Nintendo Switch in the first place, not only with how good it looked, but playing smoothly as well. And luckily for Switch players, the Wolfenstein support is not ending there. Youngblood is launching on Nintendo Switch the same day as all the other platforms on July 26. And this time you play as Blaskowitz's daughters as they kill every Nazi that gets in their way to find their father. So, a lot of you always ask me about this in the background of my collection. Where did I get a Hollow Knight physical release? Well, I didn't actually. This Hollow Knight special edition thing came from Best Buy. I didn't even realize till I got home that it's just the plushie and then the code came on the receipt, which of course I threw away like a heathen and so I actually lost the game. 
it's still cool though. <laughs> but we are finally actually getting a real physical release, one that I am not just going to throw in the trash. <laughs> and if somehow you don't know, Hollow Knight is a challenging 2D action metroidvania. Explore caverns, defeat creatures, and try to solve an ancient long hidden mystery. And I feel like if you took a poll of the Nintendo Switch fan base, Hollow Knight would probably come out on top as most people's favorite indie game on the Switch. That or Celeste. Oh, I'm actually really excited for this next one, Saints Row the Third. I'm not kidding, I actually didn't love GDA all that much growing up. I really liked Vice City, but it wasn't until GDA 5 that I fell in love with the franchise. However, up until then, I loved every single Saints Row game, and the third is definitely my favorite. That's a video for another time, I just loved how quirky and over the top Saints Row was. It didn't take itself seriously like GDA did. Saints Row 3 blended zany humor with over the top action splendidly. It's a raunchy sandbox game that will surely diversify the Nintendo Switch game library. The word raunchy barely even describes it. There were scenes in the fourth game, I believe, that were banned from Australia. They had to take them out of the game. So don't buy this game for your kid. Buy it for yourself, play it, and enjoy it, because they're a ton of fun. You know what else we haven't really got that many of on Switch other than open world sandbox games? shooter games, like Sniper Elite. Sniper Elite version 2 Remastered shoots its way on a Nintendo Switch on May 14th. And if you didn't already know, Sniper Elite version 2 Remaster is a third-person tactical shooter set during World War II. The Sniper gameplay is where the series shines the brightest, as it delivers with top-notch authenticity. If you love seeing slow-mo bullets go through skulls, this is the shooter for you. We talked recently on the channel about This War Is Mine, and now it's getting a physical release. You take control of a group of civilians surviving through the horrors of a war in a city of ruins. The physical Switch version also includes both DLCs, The Little Ones and Father's Promise. Another game that a lot of you probably already fell in love with on the Switch that you can buy physically. Uh, next we have a game I never heard of before called Among the Sleep. There's nothing more helpless than a toddler alone in a nightmarish home. In this first person horror adventure you will explore a ghoulish house and several other unsettling places through the eyes of a two year old looking for his mother. With just a teddy bear to serve as company, the pitch black night awaits with even darker secrets to be unveiled. The Switch version of this game features additional dialogues and improved visuals. Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. It's a cool name, but I don't know what it is. Let's find out. Rogue Gods, a beautiful setting and your own ship. Those are the promises of this point and click RPG. This game features an open world ready for exploration. Heavily inspired by classic D&D with vibrant visuals and intricate storylines, Pillars of Eternity aims to be an old school RPG at its best. Navigate your ship and unravel the mysteries that lie within the dead fire area. Mutant Road Zero caught my eye as soon as I saw it announced the first time. It looks interesting and I'm actually looking forward to it. It comes from the same team of designers that put together Payday and Hitman. It's a tactical RPG that mixes real-time stealth exploration with turn-based combat and the game sets its story in a world where there are no more humans, a post-apocalyptic wasteland overrun by nature and inhabited by mutants. And you control a group of those mutants, scavenging and trying to survive in a ruthless world that was left behind, making stealth a priority. You will need to hide, ambush, and die trying. And I'm not kidding, that's actually one of my most anticipated games on this list. I'm definitely picking that one up. I think it's gonna be fun. I hope it's gonna be fun. I, I, have, I really have no way of knowing, <laughs> but it looks good. If this video hits 10,000 likes, I'm gonna go ahead and just give this one away. We can make it happen. So smash that like button and enter the giveaway down below. Here, flip all over that subscribe button. It, oh, geez, I scared myself. <laughs> <laughs> There's little dangling bits from my fan here and I made them move when I did that and I thought it was like a spider or something. Can we get a replay on that? <laughs> did I actually look scared? I don't care. Click or tap on this if you want to watch something else. I appreciate it. I'm out.